ఓం నమో వెంకటేశాయ శుక్లాంబరధరం విష్ణు శశివర్ణం చతుర్భుజం ప్రసన్నవదనం ధ్యాయ సర్వ విఘ్నోపశాంతే వ్యాసాయ విష్ణురూపాయ వ్యాసూపాయ విష్ణవే నమో వై బ్రహ్మ నిదే వాసిష్టాయ నమో నమ స్మరణ మాత్రేణ జన్మ సంసార బంధనాథ్ విముచ్యత నమస్తస్మీ విష్ణవే ప్రభు విష్ణవే లక్ష్మీనాథ సమారంభం నాథే అమున మధ్యమాచార్య పర్యంతం వందే గురు పరంపరాం వార్తాయ ప్రతిబోధితా భగవత నారాయణేన స్వయం వ్యాసేనగ్రతి పురాణ ముని మధ్యే మహాభారతం అద్వైతామృతవర్షిణి భగవతీ అష్టాదశాధ్యాయిని అంబత్వామనుసంధదామి భగవద్గీతే భవద్వేషిణి వసుదే వసుతం దేవం కంసచాణూరమర్ధనం దేవకీ పరమానందం కృష్ణం వందే జగద్గురు ఓం నమో వెంకటేశాయ మీ ప్రణాం శబరిపడి looking at chapter 8 the recapitulation of chapter 8 uh, akshara brahma yogam now at the end of the chapter 7 bhagwan uses certain technical terms adi bhutam adi devam then adi bhautikam adi devam and adhyatmikam so arjuna uh, is uh, start from chapter uh, incidentally in chapter 7 there is uh, no question that there is the first chapter so far we have come across where bhagwan arjuna doesn't ask any questions so entire the uh, seventh chapter is a converse uh, as, as a discourse from bhagwan himself now beginning of the uh, chapter 8 is asking the clarification so he says kim tat brahma kim adyat kim adhyatmakam kim karma purushottama adibhutam cha kim proktam adi devam kim uchyate so he is asking what what is uh, brahma what is adhyatmam what is karma what is adibhutam and then what is adi devam then what is adi yajna and where does adhyagyam stay in this body then uh, how do we uh, when you said that no prayana kali when you leave this body we should think about me so how do we remember about you when you when we leave this body these are the questions that arjuna asks and bhagavan answers all of them acharam brahma param so that means uh, the brahm the brahman is indestructible acharam means chara is which is declining dec- declining or decaying it is in undecaying acharam brahma param and that's the ultimate paramam and then swabhavo adhyatma uchyate and that's nature of that brahma is called as adhyatma then what is karma bhuta bhava bhuta bhavo bhavat karo visarga that means the creation of this entire universe all this creation of all these various uh, entities in this universe that is what is called as karma that's what he said then adibhutam the adibhutam is the uh, the embodied the physical structure that is the you know this uh, the physical aspect of this bhagwan is adibhutam chara it undergoes a change because the the physical world undergoes a change it is created it is sustained and then it is annihilated also that is the nature of the thing is undergoing the change charo bhavah purusham chati adi devatam so that means the adi dev purusham means the the various demigods that is various uh, the, the, the the devatas indra varuna all these things are called as adi devatam or other way of looking at it is purusham adi dev purusham means one is staying in this body bhagavan can also be interpreted as adi devata message adi yajna aham evatra so adi yajna one who is the uh, who is beyond these various yajnas that are being performed is myself aham eva that's what bhagavan says i am the one and i am residing in this body of all these various in uh, all these various jivatmas i reside in each one of them as adi yajna that's what bhagavan says then <clears throat> the question is the famous question antakale cha maam eva smaran muktva kalevaram yaprati sab madbhavam yati yati na not yatina astra samsaya that means at the end of this leaving this physical body a person who thinks of me only at that time he reaches my own about there is no doubt on that krishna not only that whosoever is the person who thinks of whatever is the last thought in his mind the person reaches that as the ultimate about that's what he is saying so it's not uh, so difficult to understand now uh, we are all sitting here at the end of this class we have some thought somebody some people may like to want to go to Uh, take bath or some people may want to have their coffee or something like that so that uh, the, the next uh, process is they go to the resp- they want to fulfill their respective desire so that's what it is so similarly when the when the, uh, the mind and uh, when the the subtle body leaves this the physical body whatever thought that comes into it goes to fulfill that particular desire and therefore it takes the birth in the next one so that is what bhagwan is saying that so whatever is the thought of the ultimate uh, the the when the person leaves this body that is the uh, stage at which the, the person goes to that particular state that's what he's saying mm-hmm. so that the, then um, the uh, answering the arjuna's question so that means how do i remember about you only at the time of you know at the time of living this body he's saying tasmat sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhya yudhya cha mayyarpita manobuddhi 
mame vaishyati mame vaishyati asamsaya that means always think about me so when you always think about him then in the last stages also you will think about me that's what bhagwan is giving that is uh, making this point here sarveshu kaleshu ma manusma so always at all periods of time think about me only when you think about me then finally at the last stages you will remember about me and therefore you will teach me about that what is there are different ways of doing that so bhagwan is saying abhyasa yuktena chetasa na na anya gamina paramam pur paramam purusham divyam yati partham partha anuchintayan so <clears throat> Or the person who is already uh, abhyas, that is by practice. So Bhagwan, a, a person who is keeps on practicing about thinking about me, then obviously it becomes an habit for him, and therefore at the time of leaving this body, he said that when you leave this body, you got so many desires fulfilled, you know, unfulfilled desires in your in you know in your mind. So the, what is the most uh, craving desire that you have that comes at the last minute? You know that comes at the as as the thought at the last minute. Supposing if you have got, uh, I say, twenty thirty desires. Which is the most important desire that has not been fulfilled? That comes towards the uh, at the time when you leave this body. So everybody knows that uh, the, at the exact point of time they are going to leave this body. At that time only that particular thought comes. So if you keep on practicing about Bhagwan, I should remember Bhagwan. I should be, remember about Bhagwan at the time of leaving this body. Keep on practicing that thought. Then obviously at the time of leaving this body, that thought will come. That's what Bhagwan is saying. Abhyas, you know. Then he is talking, uh, giving a description about this uh, this uh, Parabrahmam. He is saying Kavim Puranam. अनुशासितारम अनोहो अनियम अनुस्मरण्येते हैं सर्वस्य धातारम अचिंत्य रूपम आदित्य वर्णम तमसप परस्ता दैट मींस ही इस द पर्सन शुड मेडिटेट अपॉन द द द द परब्रह्म हु इस लाइक हु इस द कवि कवि मींस हु इस द नॉलेज नॉलेजेबल पर्सन दैट इस ही इस द फुल ऑफ नॉलेज पुराणम पुराण प Anushasitaram, Anushasitaram, who is the, uh, the one who is able to give orders or command, commanding. Anushasitaram, Anoho Aniya, he is even smaller than the smallest. In fact, the Katopanya says he is smaller than the smallest and bigger than the biggest. Anoho Aniya, Mahato Mahiya. How is it possible? How can a, a certain thing be smaller than the smallest at the same time bigger than the biggest? Take the space. The space is uh, the space is the biggest thing in this universe because everything resides in the space. So that is bigger than the biggest. Similarly, space is smaller than the small because even inside the atom, the space remains in, inside that also. So that means, at the same time, it can be smaller than the smallest and the same time bigger than the biggest. So anoho aniyan, because Bhagwan resides even in the like, smallest thing. Even if you take an ant or even a small, you know, this uh, uh, this uh, the ant has got uh, ant itself is very small. Within that, the jivatma of ant is must be much small, smaller. Within the jivatma, Bhagwan resides as the paramatma, so he can be the smaller than the small. So anoho aniyan. Anusmarit yaha sarvasya dhataram. So that means he is the supporter of all this entire universe. Achintya rupam. Achintya rupam is very, very difficult to comprehend. His form is very, very difficult to comprehend. Aditya varnam tamasapara. Tamasa means darkness. He is beyond the darkness. He is always full of light. So he is the he's most effulgent person. We saw in Vishnu Sasam in a lot of places, Bhagavan is the most effulgent. For example, when he incarnated as Sri Krishna Paramatma in this, uh, uh, you know, this. Uh, the prison of Mathura. Incidentally, last week we have been there to the place of birthplace of Sri Krishna Paramatma. So <clears throat> it was dark. It was dark, pitch dark outside, pitch dark inside. It was raining outside, dark clouds, and then um, Bhagwan shone like a you know this uh, uh, this uh, the, the light of the lightest, and therefore with that we, because of the self uh, the light uh, effulgence of Bhagwan, both Vasudeva and Devaki were able to see Krishna Paramatma. So he is the source of light for everything, and therefore he says Aditya Varnam Tamasa Parastha. So he is the he is the brightest person. So again he is he is continuing the thought of Prayana Kali Manasa Chalena Bhaktiya Yukto Yoga Balena Chiva Bhuvor Madhya Pranam Pranam Aveshya Samyak Sam Samyak. Satam param purusham upayiti divyam. That means a person who, at the time of his leaving this body, is able to fix the life, uh, fix the the, uh, the prana in between the, the in between that you know the middle of this eyebrow. And then by the strength of his yoga, he is able to engage in remembering the Bhagwan with full devotion, and certainly will reach the abode of Bhagwan as such. So we also talked about you know these various uh, in Avadvara Puri when the when the mind when the the, the parama when this uh, jivatma lives through this you know the. This is Brahmarandram. That is the hole, the small, subtle hole at the Brahmarandram. It reaches the abode of Bhagwan as such. <clears throat> so the uh, <clears throat> some people meditate upon the Om Kara and therefore they enter into the Brahman as such. So now uh, he is talking about different uh, 
ways of doing it. Uh, this is what we talked about. Sarvad, Sarvadvarani Samyaya Manohridi Nirityacha Murdhyani Adhyatmanaha Raya Pranam Pranam Astito Yoga Dharanam. That means one is able to detach from all the sense organs, closing all the doors. That means all the, the seven doors are completely closed. That means he, by, by his yogic powers, he's able to control that. And then fixing the mind and the heart, which is, uh, you know, on the on the, the, the spiritual heart, which is on the right side of us. Then when he's able to leave this body through the, the top of the head, one also is able to reach the Buddha Bhagavan. So some people meditate upon the Omkara, Omiti Eka Acharam Brahma, Yavaharana Anusmarana Yaprayati Tajatyaham Sayati Paramam. Om also Om is also the form of Bhagavan as such. So people are able to meditate on the Om Karatswarupam and they are able to leave this body. They are also able to ultimately reach me. Ananya Cheta Sadatam Yomam Smarati Nitya Saha Tasyaham Sulabhapata Nitya Yukta Sa Yoginaha. So that finally conclu I mean he is saying that the devotion is the key. As long as people are able to remember me with the uh, with, with the love and affection at the time, the last time of leaving this body, they are ultimately able to reach me. So ultimately, the love and affection ultimately comes into the play. Therefore, Mama Petya Punat Janma, Rukale Mahasaswatam, Napnuvanti Mahatmana, Samsiddhim Paramahamudhi. So Bhagavan is saying, what does it mean when they reach me? When they reach me, they, they don't get back into this world at all. Nachapuna Ravartate, Nachapuna Ravartate. That's what Brahma Sustra says. That means this is the place of Dukhale. That is, you, uh, you are sometimes you get glimpses of bliss, but always you it is followed by sorrow. So, so happiness, sorrow, happiness, sorrow. This kind of advantam is there. So this place is full of sorrow, and therefore those people who reach me, they never come back to this world. That's what I, that is the greatest advantage of reaching me. That's what Bhagwan is trying to say. So all this, the entire loka starting from Brahma right up to the Patala loka, all the living beings in this universe, whichever loka you go to, right up to the Brahma loka, you have got to come back to this world again. There is no question of you know they're not coming back to this world so they get repeated births and deaths and therefore finally only when they reach my abode they don't have they don't come back they, they don't come back at all then he talks about the brahma's life brahma's life is sahasra thousand chatur yugas so each chatur yuga is 4.32 million years multiplied by thousand is 4.32 billion is one day of brahma similarly brahma's one day night is also 4.32 billion years that's what he's saying then <clears throat> All these uh, uh, things which are manifest in this Brahma's day will all go into deluge. That means they, they will go into the pralaya at the, at, the, at the Brahma's night. All the lokas up to the Indra loka, Bur loka, Bur loka, Suvar loka. These three lokas get into this pralaya that is called as Naimitika pralaya and the Brahma's night. And again, when Brahma's, Brahma wakes up and comes into this world, again they are born into this world. So, this kind of a process of coming back, even in Brahma's day, they, they come into this world, spend some time, go back, again come back. So, this kind of a samsara chakra completely is is you know uh, happening in this entire universe the, the stage beyond this brahma's place is what is my my abode avyakta achara ityukta mahu paramam gatim yam prapyana nivartante tad dhamma paramam that means the, the uh, my abode is beyond the place of this brahma and once a person reaches that that person never comes back into this world purushasya para partha bhaktya labhya bhaktya bhaktya labhya stvananyaya Yeshyantastani Bhutani Yena Sarva Midam Tat Yena Sarva Midam Tatam. That means this Supreme Personality of the God who is greater than all these people, all these various lokas, is attainable only through Ananya Bhakti. That means without uh, love for Bhagavan and uh, without any, uh, you know, with, uh, that is uh, Ananya Sintiyan Tomam. That's what we saw in, which, that's what we chant in Vishnu Sasna. Ananya Sintiyan Tomam, Vijana Paripa. That is without any deviation from anything else, only love for Bhagavan. That is unalloyed devotion to the Bhagavan alone can ultimately take to, take to this loka and i pervade not only in this world i go beyond this world also i'm i'm pervading this entire universe not only this universe go beyond the universe that's what bhagavan talks about that so <clears throat> then he talked about the two paths the people who follow the path of archara the marga that is who follow the who, who leaves this body at the time of daytime sukla paksha and then uh, uttarayana they are led by agni the light and therefore they reach the brahma lokam that is the loka of the brahman the people who follow the path of the dhumra that means the smoke they uh, leave the body at the time of night time and then krishna paksham and then shanmasa that is this uh, dakshinayanam they enjoy the benefits in chandra loka pitra loka and all other places and then again come back to this universe so these uh, the people who follow the first path go they never come back they follow who follow the second path comes back again to this world so there are as i told you there are four different paths and uh, different ways ultimately a person uh, reaches when he leaves this body one is people who follow this you know this uh, 
Acharadi Margam, they go to Brahma Lokam. People who follow the Dumadi Margam, they go to this uh, with different Lokas, come back again. People who don't follow any of this path, that is, they, these are only with respect to the yogis. They are uh, they are determined by their own pun punya papa karmas. They may go to Swarga or to the heaven or to the hell, and then after fulfilling all their uh, the the fruits of their actions, they come back again into this world. People who are surrendered to the Bhagavan, they they are not uh, they are not conditioned by any of this Uttarayana or Dakshinayana. At the last stage, at the last stages, Bhagavan takes care of Ham Smarami Bad Bhakam, Nayami Paramam Gati as Swara Bhagavan said in the Swaraha Purana. So he remembers them and then takes them to his Uttamaloka. So these are the four ways of ultimately what happens to the person who leaves this body. So <clears throat> they all these yogis who completely understand these two paths, decide which path they want to take, and then a wise person takes the path of non-returning this. That's what Bhagavan says. Not only that, in the last loka, Bhagavan says. Vedesh Sarvesh Tapastu Chaiva, Dhanesh Yat Punya Palam Pratish Pratishtam, Atyeti Tat Sarva Midam Viditva, Yogi Param Stanam, Upaiti Cha Adhyam. That means the, the people who, who follow this path of yoga, they in, in spite of they, they may not be wanting all these benefits of you know with these punya karmas, they will all the all the acts of whatever the benefits of doing the punya karma like tapas, yajna, dana, all those things will also accrue to them. Uh, even though they may not want uh, want, and therefore they will enjoy that benefits also here, even though they may not want it. Like I told you, you know, when you light the fire, your intention may be to get the heat, but then the, the, the light also is there. Similarly, they get all these benefits, and then, of course, ultimately they reach the abode of Bhagavan and such. This is how the chapter 8 concludes. So tomorrow onwards, we'll start uh, chapter 9, which is called as Raja, Raja Vidya Raja Gukhya Yoga. It's also one of the important uh, chapters of Bhagavad Gita. Vasude Vasutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Maddanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagatkum Sarvam Sri Krishna Namastu Krishna 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 Krishna.